Good morning, church. Um, as you can see, we've got um, Pathfinder investiture today, but I don't actually know where the children are. If you just give me a couple of minutes, I'll try and find them. I'll try and round them up somehow and we'll get started. Thank you. Zion, you need to hurry up with your breakfast. You still need to get the new uniform on. Yes, ma'am. We're always in the shower. Can you please hurry up? I haven't had money yet. I haven't time to go in. Where's your hat and, and your stuff? Where's your stuff and your stuff? Stop saying it. You forget, quickly. How could you go there and do that and look at your after you with a special? Oh, boom, I forgot to put on your auto. Pathfinders, attention! 
Your Pathfinder Pledge. By the grace of God, I will be your country, I'll keep our own law, I'll be a servant of God to protect the men. And your law. The Pathfinder Law is for me to keep morning watch, give you my eyes to God, care for my body, keep it up alive, and if that is not being able to stop being sanctioned, keep us under my heart, and all God's grace. Stand at ease. Be seated. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for letting us all watch this service. May you bless everyone that's at home watching and bless us forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to Camp Hills. Pathfinders at Investiture. I hope you enjoy. Now we will start praise and worship.
this time we're going to have the tithes and offering and although I can't ex exactly give you a physical basket as we would normally do at church I can extend this basket to you in a virtual manner and by this you can give your tithes and offering online via the mobile app and your banking you can get the sort code from any member of the church treasury team you can do it on church on a Friday or Sunday where you can bring in your tithes and your offering and at this time we're going to have a prayer Heavenly Father we thank you for being able to give us what we have and at this time we just want to give you back just a small portion of what we owe to you and as we give unto you we ask that you bless this money and help it to extend your work through the near and far of this world and bless everyone who has and hasn't given. In your name we pray. Amen. adventurers and pathfinders. My story today is about a pathfinder called Tommy. Now Tommy is age 10 and he's in the friends class. Now as you know with friends everything is exciting. You're in the pathfinder club, the first class of the pathfinder club. And it's even more exciting when the club decides to go to Campari. The director gave all the parents the list of the equipment and the clothing that the Pathfinders needed. So Tommy's mom thought, yeah, I think Tommy would enjoy going to Campari. And she was right. Tommy was so excited. So days before the Campari, Tommy's mom packed the rucksack. She went down the list and made sure that she put everything in the rucksack that was on that list. She wanted to make sure that Tommy was warm and dry and was comfortable. That's a good mom. So just before, the day before, I would say, the campery, Tommy thought to himself, well, I don't know exactly what my mum has packed. So we thought, okay, let me have a quick look in the rucksack and see what's in there. So that's what he did, he had a look. He saw, to his disgust, waterproof jacket and waterproof trousers. What am I gonna do with this? All they do is just cover your clothes Nah, let's get rid of that. Then he looked further. He saw walking boots. I thought, that hasn't got Nike on it, the Nike icon. Mmm, that has to go. Then he saw his old tracksuits, last year's tracksuits. They still look smart though, but he thought, no, I want the latest. So, he replaced his old tracksuits with his brand new ones. He replaced the walking boots with his brand new white Nike trainers. And then he bought, he exchanged his waterproofs, ugh, his waterproofs ugh, with brand new jacket. It was a warm jacket as well. So I thought, I'm happy to go now. So he zipped up his rucksack, strapped it down, and he was good. You know, and excited, he was really, really excited. So Tommy didn't really sleep that night at all. So when his mom woke him up in the morning, he was wide awake anyway. So it came to boarding the coach. Tommy was bursting with excitement. The journey took two and a half hours, but Tommy spoke 
all the way there. You know how it is. I'm sure you know some people like that. So finally, they get to the campsite. They were all directed to the tents they were sleeping in. They unpacked whatever they need and whatever. And then they prepared themselves for the meeting. So Tommy put his lovely tracksuit bottoms on and his campery t-shirt and his brand new night trainers. And he thought, let me just carry my coat with me as well, just in case it gets a bit cold. So we entered in the mar marquee where we saw hundreds of pathfinders. Wow, it was fabulous. During the meeting though, he heard a lot of noise on the roof and the noise seemed to get louder and louder and louder. That sounds like rain, Tommy thought. And yes, he's right, it was rain. And I used to know sometimes Adventures and Pathfinders, when you go camping, when it's dry, the ground is dry. You can walk quite comfortably on the ground. But when you get a heavy downpour of rain, the surface can become very slippy and it can become very muddy. Now, for people that know me, I don't like mud. It's just, look, it's just mud. I don't like it. I remember my colleagues, AC Loretta and AC Mark, we went on a lovely walk and we were reading the map and the map was taking us through a farm. It was the right of way, but it was taking us through a farm. And we came to this patch where it was so muddy that I couldn't believe it. Now, my other colleague thought, I don't think this is muddy now. I thought, yes, it is. But he pointed over to the field where the cows were and i thought no this is mud i believe this is mud because that was the only way i was going to get through that but anyway i don't like mud so let's get back to the story at the end of the meeting now tommy was thinking to himself oh how am i going to get back to the club site he saw other pathfinders, they have their Wellingtons on, some of them have their walking boots on, and majority of them had waterproof jackets and a waterproof trousers. Oh. So he stood at the exit door and thought, how am I going to make this? Because it's still raining heavily. So he thought to himself, okay, I think the only way I can do this then is to run. Run as fast as I can so I don't get too wet. Because I wouldn't like to get my jacket wet or my tracksuit bottom wet or my trainer. Well, I, I don't like clothes to get wet whilst I'm in the clothes. So we decided, yep, yeah, I'm going to brace it and run. So that's exactly what he did. He ran. He got faster and faster and faster. But he didn't realise that in part of the grass, it got a bit extra slippy because of the rain. So when he ran, guess what happened? I think you know, I think you know what happened. Tommy fell and he didn't just fall, but he fell into a mud patch. Now, I think I could leave it up to you <laughs> to imagine what he looked like when he got up off that floor. But could you imagine what the counsellor said? But more so, what his mum said when he eventually got home and when she would have opened the rucksack and saw these muddy clothes the clothes that she didn't pack for Tommy. So what can we learn from this story? What I want to emphasize 
is the clothing. It's important for us to wear the right clothing, especially for camping, because the weather changes. And for Tommy, he, had, he didn't take advice from the people who knew better, the people who were experienced. He ignored their advice because all he was focused on was looking good. So it reminded me of a story in the Bible, which is found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Now it's about a king and his son was getting married. And of course, as a father, you want the best for your child. So he put on a big feast. He provided garments for his guests. Now who wouldn't want to go to a wedding where all you have to do is bring yourself? But funnily enough, the guests who he invited didn't want to attend. They made so many different excuses. So the king wasn't happy at all. So he summoned his servants to go out into the street and to gather people that you can find and bring them into the wedding because he wanted it to look nice for his son. He wanted a full room. So that's what he did. The servants went out and just grabbed anyone from the street to come in for the wedding. Each person was given a garment. But as the king walked around and greeted the guests, he noticed that one person didn't have the garment on. So he asked, how did you get in without a garment? The guest was speechless. So the king summoned his servants and said, take this man outside. And that's what they did. So what can we learn from this story, which was similar to Tommy's story? Let me explain more about the feast and the king and the garment. The king represented God and the garment represented God's righteousness, Christ's righteousness. Now the word righteousness just means right living, do the right thing. But more to me, it represents God covering us with his love. Now in the story in the Bible, the king provided everything for his guests. He wanted the best for his guests. And with God, he wants the best for us. But for us to receive that gift, we have to, sorry, for us to get the benefits of God's love, we have to receive the gift and accept it. Not like the guests who just didn't want to know, didn't want to come. He wants us to come in to the wedding, to get to know Christ for ourselves, to get to know the person who created the world, to get to know our saviour and our friend. That's all he wants us to do, because at the end of the day, he knows what's best for us. Now those guests thought, nah, I'm not going, I'm going to do my own thing. But God is saying to us, if you come with me, I will protect you. I will be there for you. Even sometimes we make mistakes. He's asking us, just say sorry. Just admit to what you've done and I will cover you. I will cover you with my love, with my grace and with my mercy. Isn't it a wonderful God that we serve? So I pray, adventurers and pathfinders, that the lessons that we've learned from this story, one, 
is that when we go path when we go camping, I should say, make sure we have the right clothing. Be that because that clothing protects us. But more to the point, make sure that we are wearing Christ's righteousness, that we are doing the right thing. And by doing that, God will cover us with his love. Amen. Pathfinders, adventurers, pray attention. Our loving Father, Lord, we thank you so much that you have brought us here this year, Lord. We are so grateful for the, your mercies. You're the creator of the universe. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that has bestowed upon us through COVID-19. You're a merciful God. Lord, you've seen over everybody in our church. We pray for the leaders of the Pathfinder Clubs, that, Lord, you give them strength and Lord, we ask you to bless everybody in their homes today, around the world, watching our investiture, that they may see our boys and girls have been taught well. Lord, we ask you to watch over the bereaved families at this time. Bless us on this great day as we invest our children to the glory of God. This is a simple prayer on this Sabbath day, your holy day. Amen. Pathfinders, attention. Right, first of all, I'm going to congratulate you because it's really, really good that you're actually here. In spite of what happened last year, you're not being in the physical classroom, you're all on Zoom, and you're here because you've actually completed your work. One of the things that I missed is not coming around, popping in, looking at your work, talking to you, find out what you know and how you're feeling. I do miss that. But actually, we appreciate being here with you, um, celebrating your investiture that you've completed the work. So now, I ask that God will continue to be with you. And as I read the charge, I pray that you will have that willingness to go on to do even more. So, Pathfinders, you have come to a place in your program of study and self-improvement when you are ready to assume new responsibility in the church and its work. Each of you have completed the work outlined in your Pathfinder classes. The insignia you have received represent the highest ideal of the Seventh Adventist Youth Organization. This insignia is to be held in trust by you so long as you carry out your, in your daily lives the ideals which the insignia stands, the ideals embodied in the Pathfinder pledge and law. Therefore, I charge that by the grace of God, you endeavour every day to cherish these high principles and to live them out in your words and action, that by so doing, you may prove to be a true servant of God and a friend to man. If for any reason whatsoever you lose sight of these ideals and do not cherish and practice them in your daily life, you are honour bound to return the insignia to the conference making the award. May God keep you true to him and to his worthy ideals in the Pathfinder Club. Pathfinders, prayer attention. Our Father in heaven, we acknowledge you, who is our saviour, friend, king, sustainer, and the giver of life. You've been with us through this Pathfinder year. You've allowed us to do the classes, you've allowed us to do the activities, and you've seen us to this point in time where we are invested in the classes, so be with us, lead, direct and uphold us as we continue to go forward knowing that you are in control. We thank you for the staff, for the directors, for all the parents and the church, the Campbell Church as a whole, in their support 
of the club. So may we continue to go forward. May we continue to hold on to you. May we continue to have that faith and trust that you will see us through all things. So be with us now. Thank you for helping us to achieve the success that we have at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Pathfinders, attention. Stand at ease. Be seated. And smile. Hill and a happy Sabbath to you. It's nice to be a part of the investiture service once again. Um, you never fail. You never, never fail. And Pathfinders, again, I know. I want to say it again anyway, because I want to. Congratulations. And may God continue to bless and keep you. We're going to pray and ask God to be with us. So, Father in heaven, thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for keeping us throughout the week and I ask that even throughout this pandemic that you have kept us in the faith and I pray that our faith will continue 
to grow and help us say, Lord, that in this time of trouble, we'll continue to spread the good news that others will know about you and will have the opportunity to say yes so that they can receive the free salvation that you offer them. Give us the strength and keep us focused in your name. Amen. Right, Camp Hill, Pathfinders, we are going to um, just a little snippet of what Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 6. Talks about the armour, and that's what we're going to look at this morning. But we're just going to briefly go through it because um, what I'd like for you to do is to explore and then feedback later on, whether um, to your counsellors or directors. But I want you to dig and I want you to be inspired by what you're going to discover about the armour of God. So, how to the armour of God. <clears throat> In our war with Satan, his society, our human weaknesses, we need spiritual help. We do. And this help comes from God and God alone. You can't get this help anywhere else whatsoever. The Bible tells us that we are at war in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. Paul addressed this in Ephesians 6, 10-20 where he talks about putting on the whole armour of God. Ephesians was one of, the, one of Paul's letters written from prison. During Paul's time in prison, he obviously became acquainted with the uniform that the soldiers were wearing. He looked at their armour and then made a very powerful comparison with their armour and the spiritual armour of God. And then Paul then wrote, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his power and might. <clears throat> in verse 11, he continues to say that we've got to put on the armour of God, that you might be able to stand the wiles of the devil. Now, Paul obviously thought it was very important for us to understand this, and it's important for us to wear this uniform so that we can stand whatever Satan throws at us. He also tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So we know that a lot is happening behind the scenes, and that's where our battle begins. Sometimes we see the results um, of that battle display in behaviour. And where we think we are fighting the individual, we're actually not. What we need to do is to pray and ask God to deliver us and to help us to be a torch for others to see. In Ephesians 13 then, it says, Therefore take up the whole armour that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So, He's saying that we're going to stand, we can do this. We just have to put our trust in God. Now Paul starts with a list. He lists the individual element of this, of this spiritual armour. The Bible tells us again and again to put on the armour and how each of it helps us and sustain us. So the first one we're going to look at is the belt of truth. Just very briefly. The belt is the first piece of equipment put on. It secures all the other pieces of the armour. Wearing the belt, the soldiers show that they were ready for action. The belt for the soldiers, remember it's a comparison. The belt for the soldiers is loosened when he's off duty. You just loosen it. But we are not going to loosen our belt because we need to keep our belt on to secure us. Truth should always surround us like a belt, like a belt. Knowing God's truth is the first antidote to Satan lies and deception. And it helps us to be truly ready for the battle. In um, John chapter 14, verses 6, 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we wear in Jesus, or Jesus surround us. And because he surrounds us, he makes us secure, he makes us feel safe, and we are ready, well equipped and ready. Without him, without the truth, everything that we have is just loose in the wind, not going anywhere. And then, number two, he said, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, Jesus is the one who clothes us in his righteousness. Without righteousness, it leaves us open to Satan's attack. To be righteous is to first of all repent and be forgiven of our sins. And then to do what is right in God's eyes. Psalms 119 verse 172 tells us that God's commandments are righteousness. So the righteousness is obedience to the law of love. In Isaiah 59:17, um, says that God Himself put on righteousness as a breastplate. This may be part of what inspired Paul to use the analogy in Isaiah 59 that explains your iniquity have separated you from God. Iniquity is the opposite of righteousness. So then, we give in to sin without repenting. We are removing our breastplate of righteousness, leaving us open to the attack. So if, even if you're wearing the, the belt, you still need the breastplate. If you're looking at the analogy that Paul is given in terms of the uniform. Then it talks about number three, the shoes. And having, and having shone your feet with the preparation of the gospel of you've got to be ready so what you wear on your feet pathfinders is very important and i remember some of our 25k hikes when different clubs would turn up with wellingtons on their feet they'll turn up with um trainers that they felt was comfortable but they were turned away they were told they were not ready not suitable footwear you can't wear them some of them got away and insisted that, you know, we're going on this walk, we're fine. But halfway through, they're like, oh, my feet are hurting me because of the different terrain. When you're given something to wear, it is because it's good for you. It's not because it's fanciful. There's a reason behind it. Um, the word preparation denotes readiness. So when you're wearing the right equipment, you're saying that you are ready. You are ready. Re it reminds us that we are to be eager to preach the gospel of peace. The church of God is sent to announce the good news of the kingdom of God, which spread the ways of peace around the world. Having our spiritual shoes on, we will be ready to spread that good news. Without the shoes, we're not going to get very far. We're going to complain, beat her, but you put on the shoes of right of, of peace and you're ready because it is the right equipment. Then, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, a shield, the Roman soldiers had shields. And when they face the war and the darts, the arrows are coming at them, they use the shield to protect them, not just themselves, but everybody. So they group their shields together, a little bit like a, um, a turtle shell where every corner is, is covered, you are shielded. So it didn't matter how many darts come at you, you were, they were ready and they were prepared. When our faith in God, is strong the love his love covers us it's impossible for satan to break through our shield and to land a blow faith means more than just believing that god exists of course it includes a firm belief that everything god does is truly for our good also faith is absolute conviction that god will always do what he promises pathfinders how do you know what god promised 
One of the things I note about the Pathfinder department and its curriculum is that you've got to learn your memory gems. And every aspect of your memory gem, you've got prayer, you've got, you've got a lot of things covered in there for every occasion. And it's important that we do, we do our memory gems because they keep us safe and they keep us relying on God's promises and they are ever ready to come to our lips, to speak hope and encouragement to others. Think about Daniel in the lion's den. Faith was a force of his, faith was his shield. What about his friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? They were protected because of their faith. Faith is powerful and it protects us not only from physical danger, but from spiritual temptation and danger. The shield of faith is just not for personal protection alone. It is to, for us to join our shield. That is to strengthen each other with our faith, building up and serving as well as being able to take on challenges. And sometimes we think, that's my faith, but together we can do so much more. And Jesus talked about having faith as small as a mustard seed and it can move mountains. Think about when we join forces, what that is like. There's another story when it talks about the disciples being in the upper room when they came together. That faith, and it put, they put their faith together in God. And look what happened. Think about what you can do in your club, and you're only a small club. Think of the power that you will gain if we have that faith and we trust each other and trust in God. Then it says, um, the helmet of salvation. We, the helmet is something that the soldiers, that was the last thing that they placed on their head. They're dressed, they're ready, and then they pick it up and they put it on, on their head because it's very important. We receive a tremendous hope and comfort by focusing on the incredible sacrifice Christ gave to us to save us the wonderful, the wonderful kingdom. Heaven is our aim. The soldiers, again, when they leave their head open and they've not put their helmet on, it, it gives a blow to the head. It, it leaves you sort of open. The helmet of salvation provides hope and protects, us, protects our mind from the things that would destroy us. Think about the story of Goliath. Was he wearing a helmet? Can you imagine if he wasn't wearing one? There would be other things that he probably would not have worn that would have, um, would have killed him anyway. But we know that it was God that was with David that day. Then we look at the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's the, the Bible. We, we have in our hands the Scriptures. And God says they testify of him. The sword of the spirit is like the, the, the Romans, when they wore their belt, there was a place in their belt for them to put the sword. But Hebrews 4, 12 explains, for the word of God is a living, is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and the discerning of thought and intent to the heart. The scriptures are powerful. The word of God is powerful. In John, it tells us that God is the word. And he is the one that opened up our hearts to loving him. And he can convict us. I mean, when you read the Bible and you're looking at the story, doesn't it talk about Christ? Don't you feel the joy in your heart? I know I do. And remember how Jesus used the word of God to defeat Satan, Matthew 4, 1 to 10. Christ used scripture to quote three times. He brought to mind the scriptures that deal with the situation. And again, like I said before, our memory gems deal with situations, relationships, prayer, 
we, we've got it all pathfinders, we really have at our fingertips and sometimes we don't realise this, sometimes we think, oh, do I have to go to club again today? I don't really want to go. Um, okay, say your memory gems, oh, I don't know them, I've forgotten. Yeah, you might have forgotten them, but you know what, they are so important. And sometimes we don't know how important they are until they disappear and then we think oh i wish i'd learned them and those of you who managed to do them even at the end of the year for your investiture the smile on your face are worth it because when somebody is discouraged you can pray with them because there are prayers in your memory gem you can encourage them you can talk about relationship there's so much that we have to give but you know what we've got to do we've got to really explore the pathfinder curriculum and in so doing it helps you to explore your bible a lot more and we can do that our sword won't stay sharp on its own we must continue to sharpen it with reg regularly with when we focus on bible study we do you've got to sharpen your sword yeah, it won't do it by itself. Pathfindering alone, just turning up on a Sunday is not enough. That's why we say to you, go home and do this. Because when you're at home in that quiet time, it allows you to think. It allows you to pray and ask God for help. It allows you to share with your family what you've been taught, what you've discovered. And today, like no other day, I'm sure that you will continue to discover a lot more and you have so much more to give. Paul ends this section to encourage us to pray fervently for, fervently for ourselves, for each other and for the work of the church. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to the end with all, you know something? is absolutely amazing and you pray believing and when you pray believing miracles happen and you get up and you say god thank you thank you so much and you want to share with your friends you want to tell them look this happened to me and i got down on my knees and i spoke to god and look look at me now prayer is absolutely amazing so I'm happy that Paul ended it with prayer because it is so important and one doesn't go without the other. That's why it says put on the whole armour of God. Okay, When we put on the whole armour of God, we will be prepared for Satan and his attack, the pride, the envy, the lust, the forbidden pleasures, the itchy ears, disappointment, discouragement, doubt all of them they're all there but with the armor friends with tough minders we'd be all right so don't worry don't worry as you explore ephesians chapter 6 and beyond and isaiah you will find that we are wearing from the time you say yes to christ we are wearing the armor it's for you to recognize what happens when you put on the armour of God. And I'll just like to leave you and to encourage you to find the leaders, counsellors. God has given you something special to share with the young heart. Because without you, there won't be a club. And the young people love you and they come to you and they talk to you. And I know sometimes we feel, oh, I'm not coming back, I'm not doing this again. But when they, when it's investiture, and we see that they are, they've got a spark in their eyes, when they give their life to, to God, we feel very proud, and so we should, because we were part of that. And I, my prayer is that God will continue to bless us, continue to keep us and true to himself and again I'd, I'd like to say thank you very much um pathfinders um continue to explore i've only touched on a little bit 
um, it's it's interesting and I won't leave it there because I now need to go and explore and enjoy the blessing that God has given me in wearing the full, the whole, the complete armour of God. Thank you and may God continue to bless you each and every day. Amen.